So we're going to go on to section 7.2. For the rest of our time, we'll talk about how to multiply and divide rational expressions. That just means fractions of polynomials, just like we've been dealing with. Multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Multiplying, dividing, rational expressions. Very, very, very much like working with fractions. With fractions, you really have two options, right? Here's your two options for multiplying. If I just give you some regular old fractions, we can do something like that. And you have two options, really. You could go and multiply the, the numerators, couldn't you? Do like 7 times 15, 5 times 11, because we know when we multiply fractions, we just go straight across. Do you recall that from mm -hmm. a long time ago? I hope so. I hope you, you do, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's good. We just go straight across, and we get something like 100, what is that, 105 over 55. And then you'd have to simplify it, wouldn't you, if you did it this way? But there's really another option, and this is probably what you prefer to do when you multiply fractions. So the or what we're going to do, when you get down to this part of it, you still have to write it as 7 times 15 over 5 times 11. But what we can do here is instead of actually going through with the, this process, I want you to realize what we've just done. Look at the problem real quick. Do you see that in going from this step to this step, we've actually changed it from a multiplication problem to a simplification problem that we've just done. Do you see that? Do you see common factors now? Mm -hmm. We can simplify common factors. So the 5 becomes a 1, 15 becomes a 3. This is what you're used to, right? I hope. Mm -hmm. And you do the 21 over 11, which is a lot easier than, than doing that. Mm -hmm. But notice that the process here is when you write two fractions being multiplied together, as one fraction, you change it from a multiplication problem to a simplification problem, and then we're back to the 7.1 stuff that we just finished doing. That's it. That's really it. We'll try a few kind of basic, basic problems here, just to get our feet wet, wet with the stuff, and then we'll deal with some, some honest to goodness uh, rational expressions and, and see how to accomplish those. So, just to kind of confirm what we're doing, can we do something like? Okay, first thing. Notice we do have multiplication. They're fractions. They're rational expressions. We each have, we only have one term on each numerator and denominator, though. That's fine. We can still go about and multiply these together and simplify them. So here's what we're going to do. Here's a step I do need to see from you. Are you listening back there? Step I do need to see from you. I need to see somehow that you're making this into one fraction before you start simplifying them. This is for a couple reasons. First, I need to see that you, you know we multiply straight across and we get one fraction on the top and the bottom, numerator and denominator, before we simplify. Second, I can't allow you to do this across like addition or subtraction because it just flat out doesn't work. And so if, if you can make this into one fraction, write this as one fraction, then I know you understand that I'm not going to be able to do this on addition subtraction. We can't simplify across addition subtraction. Are you with me on this? So there's two ways you can do this. You can rewrite the problem like I'll be doing, or if you, if you want, if you just don't feel like rewriting it, if you ever have multiplication, we can just extend that line and put the dot in the dot. That makes this into one fraction. Just do this little piece before you actually simplify. You okay with that? Just do that for me. Make sure you have one fraction before you simplify, because if you can't do that, and with addition or subtraction, you got a problem. You can't simplify like we're about to. So I'll go back to what we were. You can just do the line, put the dot in the dot, if you'd like on your paper. Me, I'm going to rewrite it. Negative 5x cubed. We know with multiplication we multiply straight across. So this becomes negative 5x cubed 
times 2b squared. We're actually not going to multiply them together. We're not going to get negative 10 x cubed b squared. That's too much work. We want to simplify before we do that. So let's look at this problem. What I'd like to, to know from you is, do I have any common factors on the numerator and the denominator? Yes. Firstly, are you okay getting to this point? Yeah. Multiplying fractions is straight across. We're just we're, we're right here right now. We haven't multiplied the numbers yet. We're right here right now. We're going to simplify now. What was the numbers you said? Five. Okay. So we're going to simplify like you would up here. The five, negative five becomes a what now? One. Yeah, don't forget about the negative, negative one. And this 15 becomes? Five. And we're dividing by five, remember. What else gets simplified? The x. Yes. Oh, x is great. This x is completely gone. This x becomes what? X squared. I'll write that up top so I don't forget about it. Anything else? The b, b squared. Oh, b's, okay. So the b squared and the b cubed, what, what happens here? Gone, okay, great. And this becomes a what? B. So I'll rewrite that. We just have to be careful not to lose anything in translation here. So we notice we have a negative. We've got an x squared, and we have a 2. Don't forget about that 2. You didn't cross it out. It's still there, all right? Can you tell me how much I'm going to have on the numerator? Negative 2. Negative Great. Great. Perfect. That's exactly right. Negative 2, negative 2, x squared. It's all being multiplied. And on the denominator, how much do you get? How did you get the 9? Because 3 times 3, you still have the So we don't forget about that 3. We didn't cross that out. It's still there. 3 times 3, and then the b. You're exactly right. Would you raise your hand if you're okay with this one? Feel alright with it. Would you like to try one of your own? Sure. Let's try. We'll try two. One you might not be able to simplify. It. I just want to make sure that you can do this. The second one you'll be able to simplify. Let's do this one on your own. Remember what I'd like to see from you is before you try to simplify or even multiply these things together, I want to see you write this as one fraction. So if you want to just extend that line, that's, that's okay. That's fine with me. As long as we know that we can't simplify until we get this to be one fraction. That saves us a lot of headaches later. Is there a little bit more time? Give it 20 more seconds or so, see if we can knock that out. Good, lots of good work so far. Okay, here's what I'm talking about, about showing me this, the work. If you really want to do this, if you don't want to rewrite it, um, write this as one fraction because we can do that with multiplication. Put the dot and the dot, it's signifying that multiplication of two fractions is multiplication of numerators and denominators. That's fine with me, okay? You can do that. Then check for anything you can simplify. Is there anything to simplify in this problem? No. No, no there's really not. So we're going to keep on going and say this is 12a. 
This is 5b squared, and that's it. Sometimes you can't simplify anything. If there's no common factors, you're, you're good. That's it. The next one, same idea. We'll extend our fraction. Did you do that? Mm -hmm. yes. Put the dot and the dot. I want to see that because this shows me I understand it has to be one fraction before I start crossing stuff out. Anything simplify here? The y squared. Y, okay, y squared's gone. Y cubed becomes a? Y. Perfect. Anything else? The three and the x. Three is four. gone. That becomes a one, actually. Uh -huh. And the n negative nine becomes? Three. three. Good. Don't forget about the negative. And x. Ah, right. We have x to the fourth, and we have an x to the fifth. x to the fourth is completely gone, becomes a one. x to the fifth, we have one remaining x after we simplify that out. How many will made it that far? Good. We write what's left over, write it nice and neat like. We've got 1 times 2 times y, so that's going to give us 2y. We've got negative 3 times x, that's just negative 3x. I believe that's our final answer. As good as we can do it. Now, there is one more that we can cover today that we're going to talk about. What happens when I start doing things like this? A rational expression times a rational expression. Well, guess what? This is going to be so similar simplification, it's not even funny. It's going to be almost the same thing. There's only one little extra step that we need to do. So here's our, our steps for this. First step we're going to do, pretty much this happens almost, almost every time you get rational expressions. What's the first thing you think we're going to do? What shoes are you wearing today? Factoring. Factoring shoes. What are we going to do? Factoring. You're going to factor. Yeah, you're going to factor this. Just like you do with simplification, you're going to factor completely. Factor completely. Let's see if we can do that. Just kind of do this quickly. We have a minute and ten seconds to see if we can get this thing done. Does this factor? Yep. Yeah. What factors out of that? Six. Perfect. Does the 7 factor? No. Does the 14 factor? No. Hey, are you starting to recognize what the x squared minus 1 is? Mm -hmm. What is that? X, x plus 1, one x minus 1. Good. Different squares someone said over here, x minus 1, x plus 1. Are you starting to see the x minus 1, x plus 1 pop up like that? Mm -hmm. Good. We factored this, factored out of 6. 7 and 14, we're good. x squared minus 1, we've got to factor that difference of squares. Remember, this is x squared minus 1 squared. We can do x minus 1, x plus 1. We already did this today, actually, in this class. The next step is exactly what we did right here and right here. We're going to write this as one fraction. That's the easy. That's easy. For us, that just means this right here, folks. We're going to take this. We're going to extend the line. That makes it one fraction. Put the dot dot. And guess what? Look at the board. Does this not look exactly like what we had in simplification? Because yeah. it is exactly what we had in simplification. Third step is simplify. If we simplify, can you tell me some things that simplify here? gone. Seven, 14. 7 becomes a 1, 14 is a 2, so on our numerator we have 6 times 2, and we have x minus 1. That's it. It's completely simplified. How many will feel okay with this problem? Good for you. That's our steps. We're going to be doing this a lot. Next time I'll show you division as well. Um, I believe I gave you your homework for 7.1, didn't I? It's up on the internet. Okay. Have you made it to the internet yet to find that? Yes.